journey enables Lutherans and Catholics to appreciate together Martin Luther's insight into and spiritual experience of the gospel of the righteousness of God, which is also God's mercy. church today to be a field hospital for the needy, to bring those glad tidings, not to sit back and wait for those who need them to ask. It is not, is it not, in recapturing the joy of the gospel, as missionary disciples who reach out to the margins, to the poor, the defenseless, to those who suffer racism, want, illness, neglect, where reformation of the churches must begin and continue? Here in Chicagoland, we know these needs all too well. We witness the daily impact of violence in the streets, of hopelessness in the hearts of those living in segregated neighborhoods and locked in generational poverty and a political environment that traps the powerless. This cycle persists Pope Francis explained this week, when dialogue is replaced either by a futile antagonism that can even threaten civil coexistence, or by the domination of a single political power that constrains and obstructs a true experience of democracy. In the one, the Pope continued, bridges are burned. In the other, walls are erected. We must bring the joy of the gospel to all these areas. We must be missionaries of Christ's mercy to a world in need. When we join together as brothers and sisters to serve the common good united by our faith in Christ, we become the bridge that can span divisions, even those that are 500 years old. Animated by the joy of the gospel, trusting that we are doing not our own work, but Christ. We heed his abiding teaching that whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit because without me, you can do nothing. The God who is faithful to promises, even when we are not, comes to us again, right here, right now, in this place. Here on this night, God comes to us with a new covenant, a promise produced by 50 years of honest, respectful conversation and relationship between Christians who think differently about some things. It is a covenant grounded in our shared baptismal identity into the God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And because of this, it's a covenant built upon the certainty that the one who binds us together is always, always more powerful than that which tears us apart. It is a covenant that calls us into respect and patience, honesty and humility in our dealings with one another, and which calls us toward a commitment to engage and learn from our differences 
rather than trying to eradicate or flee from them. And because of all this, it is implicitly a covenant in our own time that challenges us to stand side by side and to work tirelessly together for peace, to stand against violence in all its forms and to witness boldly to the sanctity of life. It is a covenant that challenges us to create a place of welcome for the stranger and to stand against all forms of bigotry, racism, oppression, and exclusion. It is a covenant that challenges us to care for the poor among us and to work for a society that will provide a sufficient, sustainable livelihood for all people. It is a covenant that challenges us to cherish and protect the splendor of God's creation and to resist the temptation to exploit and abuse that creation for the garnering of personal extravagance. It is a covenant that challenges us all to live with our hands open. Opening ones to freely and joyfully receive the abundance of God's grace. And then as soon as it lands there to open those hands again in order to release our abundance back into the world with equal joy and equal freedom. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we have come together on this day to remember together the moment when 500 years ago, Martin Luther's passion to promote the renewal of the church tragically sparked the process that led to its fracture. Prejudice and ignorance distorted theological claims. Religious disagreements were exploited for political purposes. We acknowledge and confess the responsibility of Catholics and Lutherans alike in sundering the body of Christ. We long for the restoration of unity because unity is the Lord's desire for his church and because our continuing divisions severely damage the credibility of the proclamation of God's saving love to the world. We know that more unites us than divides us. And that through our baptism, we are bound together in the love of God in Christ. We also remember with gratitude the covenant between the Metropolitan Chicago Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Chicago, which our beloved predecessors, Joseph Cardinal Bernadine, and Bishop Sherman G. Hicks solemnly declared and signed on May 13, 1989. Today, we want to renew that covenant and then to build upon it in light of the new challenges now facing us, but also in light of the new opportunities provided by the Joint Declaration on the Doctrine of Justification in October 31, 1999 the joint Catholic-Lutheran commemoration of the Reformation in Lund, Sweden, on October 31, 2016, and the fruitful Lutheran-Catholic dialogue in the United States. Salient among our new challenges is the violence in the Chicagoland area that extinguishes the lives of so many of our young people and leaves families and communities devastated by grief and despair. We recognize that for us, this violence is the sign of the times to which we must respond as followers of the Lord Jesus. Therefore, as we reaffirm the shared beliefs and commitments of the 1989 covenant made by our predecessors, we now commit ourselves and our Lutheran and Catholic people to vigorous, unrelenting effort to make our region and city a place of peace and hope for all. We do so with trust in our God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. 
Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever.